from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Monsignor Sam Bianco. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Bruno and Lizette Petrakowski from Elliott Lake, Ontario. This Mass is offered in celebration of Bruno's birthday today and for the deceased members of both their families. On behalf of everyone gathered for this sacred celebration, I thank Bruno and Lizette for this gift, and we all wish Bruno a very happy birthday. Bruno ad multos anos. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family, we seek the Lord's mercy and forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is, a, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. The young men walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions, and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace, and made the inside of the furnace as though a moist wind were whistling through it. The fire did not touch them at all and caused them no pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, 
their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. A son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who had told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed are doing what your fathers does. They said to him, We are not illegitimate children. 
we have one Father, God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your Father, you would love me, for I came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. In my word, you will know the truth. These are strong words in today's gospel, and we need to put them in a clear context. Brothers and sisters, we know that Jesus was a Jew, that his first disciples were Jews, and that the first Christians prayed in the synagogue. Using these words has sometimes caused, more often than not, terrible suffering and it's been in some ways a disgrace to the Christian community how these words have been used to foster anti-Semitism. I beg your indulgence for a moment. This comes from the teaching of the church. As we read or meditate on the Passion accounts during Holy Week, we must be careful that we do not unwittingly or unwillingly carry away or transmit anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic impressions, especially with regard to the account of St. Matthew and St. John. Historically, these later accounts reflect the first-century conflicts between Jewish Christians and the synagogues over the identity of Jesus, and taken out of harm, taken out of context, they have caused immeasurable harm to the Jewish people. And that's vitally important that we understand and see that that's part of our history. 2,000 years ago, the Christians were a minority, and so they were fighting back. The situation is reversed, and there's centuries of anti-Semitism, and we must never use the words of the boss gospel or the words of Jesus to foster that. That having been said, there are truths revealed in today's gospel that are still universally applicable, that are applicable to you and to me today. Attitudes that we need to take into account with regard to how we deal with our own personal sin and social sin. The great Catholic scripture scholar, Father Raymond Brown says, these words apply to those of us who assume automatic status or privilege. And we think of so much of our world in which we, so often in the West, but people in positions of power, they automatically assume because they have power or wealth or status or privilege that somehow they're removed from the ordinary course of events, where in fact their arrogance or our arrogance can often be time used to put down other people, to have classes of people, to ignore their needs and suffering. That's both an individual and a collective reality. If we think we have money and that's a sign that God is on our side, that's a terrible misreading of what Jesus is saying. Those who assume that they have privilege or in fact do have it socially cannot use that privilege or status or wealth or power or money. Those things are given to people to be able to be used to help and to assist our brothers and sisters in need. And the second reality that's there is, what does it mean to be a slave? We understand historically people have been enslaved. Um, gratefully, there's lots of movements today, to, especially with regard to the enslavement of women and children. We recognize that that is wrong. But people can be a slave, enslaved in other ways. Cultures or society can be enslaved by pornography, by addictions to all sorts of things that lead to an unhealthy and a destructive materialism. And I think we know for sure in our own lives how we can be enslaved. That is to say, if we can't see freedom, if we don't want to be with Jesus, the addictions, the weaknesses of our hearts, we can hurt one another and our families and friends. Yes, there have been people and there are people in history who are enslaved. The people who fight against that slavery, even those who were imprisoned, as the Jews were when they were in exile, when people in the Second and, uh, World War were enslaved in camps, 
They were enslaved, but they didn't accept it. They fought against that slavery. Sometimes they weren't able to break the bounds of it, but they did everything in their power to say that slavery is not what God wants. He wants his people to be brought into freedom and to live as free men and women. What is it that brings us into freedom? What is it that takes us from using arrogance and, and privilege to stop destroying one another? It's when we truly understand that every one of us, whatever background, whatever religious disposition, whatever class, race, culture, whatever that may be, the reality is we are all sons and daughters of the Father. And what we have to do in whatever way we can as society, as individuals, to imitate the Father, to recognize the kind of love that a true father, a true mother has for his children. And a father gives direction, gives purpose to his family, but he's always, always a merciful, tender, loving, gracious paternity. And that's what you and I are doing our best to try to imitate especially as we come to these great moments of Lent and Holy Week. Will you join with me, please? And we'll offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord today. Let us pray, please, for the intentions of this Mass, that all those who are suffering any way may know something of the mercy and grace of God, and that there be healing in their lives, especially those persons who are lonely and who feel abandoned. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for all those who lack adequate food, housing, and shelter, for those persons with mental health challenges and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we take a moment to please to pray for our own personal intentions. Gracious and loving God, show us your face. Show us your face in the face of Jesus, that all of us may be truly your sons your daughters, grateful to acknowledge that we are your children, that we come from you and are going to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and the praise of May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, and may the, the, what you have given and offered to us to the honor of your name grant that they may become remedies for our healing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed now by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy Behold, the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Through the Stations of the Cross, we follow in Jesus' footsteps from Pilate's Palace to Calvary. To get your copy of the large print booklet, Reflections on the Way to the Cross, by Father Pat Fitzpatrick, please call the NCBC at 1-888-383-6277 or visit our website to order online. <laughs>